And now the next bout is scheduled for six rounds of professional boxing at the flyweight division at the weight limit of 108 pounds. คู่ถัดไปนะครับผมก็เป็นการชกสากลอาชีพทั้งหมด6ยกนะครับไลฟ์ฟลายเวทครับ108ปอนด์นั่นเองครับขอเชิญเข้ามาบนเวทีก่อนนะครับในมุมน้ำเงินครับธานีนารินรัมโอลินที่ที่สเตจฮิสอปเปนันออกจากเรดคอร์เนอร์เอลมาซามูราเอาละครับเป็นการพบกันระหว่างประเทศไทยกับฟิลิปปินส์นะครับในมุมน้ําเงินนะครับมาจากประเทศไทยครับใส่กางเกงนะครับผมดําเขียวแซมด้วยน้ําเงินนะครับสถิติในการชกสากลอาชีพนะครับชนะมา3ครั้งแพ้6ครั้งไม่เคยเสมอใครนะครับขอเสียงเป็นกลางต้อนรับธานีนารินรัม and his opponent standing across in the squared circle Hailing out of and proudly representing the Philippines, wearing white with red trim, with a professional record, a perfect one, six victories and no losses. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the undefeated Elma Zamora. And your referee in charge of the action once it begins, Ajahn San Chris Sanyadeh, and the judges scoring ringside, Ajahn Pipasi Sane, Ajahn Tanin Bumpiu, and Ajahn Carlos Costa. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for the fifth fight of this afternoon. We will have the Philippines taking on Thailand, Elma Zamora. Will be taking on Thailand's Tani Naranam. This is a light flyweight fight scheduled for six three minute rounds. Round number one. Zamora, undefeated fighter in the red corner, red and white shorts for Zamora. But Tani with nine fights on his record. Let's see if he can use that experience in his favor. So we've got a very nice. Orthodox against the southpaw, something that we definitely love to see. Southpaw against Orthodox is definitely just a battle of the footwork, but this is a first round. It's a feeling out process as well. Left hand connects there for Tani. Zamora taking his time, landing the right hand to the body. And you can see Zamora really trying to set things up here as well. He's just taking his time and he's really trying to find his footing before he delivers. Those nice uh, right hands to the body, but I do like what um, Tani's doing as well. Here looks very stiff, and he looks like someone who's very calculated as well. We've seen Tani fight before here, and he fought somebody in a fight which nobody thought he was supposed to win, and he overcame those odds and won that fight. He is a very slick, crafty southpaw, and he pulls random tricks out of the bags. He's very exciting to see, and he won his last well. It was a very close contest, and his last fight was just that big looping overhand left that he likes to throw. Yeah, definitely a tricky customer. And he does have a 7-11 tattoo as well, so. Yeah, I just noticed that as well. And there he is. He's very much, very cocky, and he almost has 
that stiff, drunken sailor style. So he's very calculated in what he's doing, but he likes to give his opponent the sense that he doesn't know what's going on. But even then, you see exactly what he's doing. His head movement is great. He knows what he's doing. He's calculating everything. He sticks his chin out, and he's trying to bait you in. He is a constant Venus flytrap. He wants you to go into him, and then he'll snap you up as soon as you get close. Yeah, both fighters really winding up there straight punches as well lots of power going into him Zamora really targeting the body too as he comes into the pocket Zamora with that beautiful rear uppercut to the chest and that is an uppercut that works very well against southpaws which is you throw that right uppercut and you aim for the chest of your opponent because it'll either hit their solar plex it'll either hit their chest and if they dip down it'll hit their chin so a great move by Zamora Zamora Controlling the fight very well on the front foot, pouring out the jab. But Tani coming back with that left hand, that signature left hand of his. A right hook on the inside from Tani as well, but Zamora fires straight back, pushing Zamora Tani into his corner. Zamora does not want to stand and trade with someone like Tani. This is what Tani wants you to do. He wants you to get in and trade. Yeah, Tani, an extremely frustrating opponent to fight, and that is the end of round one. Replay's coming up very shortly, then we will have round two. What a round. I mean, you've got to say the aggressor in that round had to be Zamora, but Tani definitely did stay in that fight with what James was saying. Jimmy was saying his drunken sailor style of just being very unpredictable, just slinging these overhand lefts in. Doesn't completely keep his, his back foot on the floor when he connects with these left hands, but just wails them in, and if they connect, they connect. Yeah, and that's what he Towards the later um, half of the fight. So as long as he keeps his energy up, he actually does very, very well. Well, we go into round two right now. We are scheduled for six if it goes the distance. Like James said, can Tani hold on for that long? Double ja Multiple jabs being landed there by Zamora to set up that overhand right and go into the body with that uppercut too. Super fast. Oh, and there's Zamora stumbling there momentarily. Tani clipping him, and again, Tani clipping him with the left hand. And that is the left hand we were talking about. He waits for you to go in. He gives you that false sense of security, and when you least expect it, he cracks you with that left hand, and that's exactly what we've been waiting for from Tani. So Zamora now has to go back to the jab. Beautiful head movement by Zamora. Zamora is on shaky legs. He looks a little bit gun shy. He needs to get back behind that jab and just try and wait it out until he feels better again. A great move by Tani. See, that's just how his counter punching style is so dangerous. You think that you're safe and that you're hurting Tani, but out of nowhere, he can just catch you off guard with one of those hard counter punches. It's beautiful stuff, really. I mean, this is what we love to see. Styles make fights, and he is boxing with a very, very unique style that we just don't see very often right now. I think it was Demarcus Cawley who used to use this style. He used it against Floyd Mayweather, and Floyd Mayweather did claim that it was his most difficult fight because he just didn't know where the punches were coming from. It's a crafty style, and I love to see it. Double jab there from Zamora. Looks like he's got his composure back in round two. Half of the round is gone. One, two, and then hooked to the body from Zamora. Tani, though, with that left hand. Zamora again, popping out the jab. Zamora really needs to get behind that jab once again and don't fall in for that bit. Stick with the jab and fight your opponent like he is a southpaw with a very powerful left hand. If you know your opponent's got a very powerful left hand, just keep stepping towards their jab. You don't need to be intimidated by their jab. And um, Tani hasn't thrown a lead hook yet either. You don't need to be intimidated by a shot he's not throwing. You already know what he likes to throw. Step around and do not allow him to get any leverage on that big left hand. Just keep moving and jabbing. Right hand there from Zamora as he tries to land him with the uppercut at long range. And this is where Tani starts to fade as well. When he's landed some big shots, he starts to fade as well. I mean, he gets tired in these moments because he's so used to fighters going down to these big shots. So that is definitely a testament to Zamora. Zamora has a good chin to withstand some of the punishment he's taken in this round. Tani as well. Loves to taunt his opponent on the outside. We saw it in round one, where he just likes to sort of play mind games with them, catch them off guard. Tani trying to sling in with that overhand left and missing. 
Zamora has now started to read that left hand. He started to read the timing of the left hand, and that's where he needs to be in this fight. He knows his fight has got a good left hand. He's got to get the timing down and start moving away from it. Let's see some of these action replays. So we had a bit of a slugfest in the opening half, and that's that shot that almost knocked Zamora off balance. And now when we see the action replay, you can tell Zamora was crossing his legs at the shot. He's got to play on his mind as well. He's got to feel like, well, my best shot that landed did not take my opponent out. But when you get tired, the shots tend to start um, hurting a little bit more and landing harder. Okay, here we go. We're halfway through the rounds that were scheduled for. We're in round three. Zamora, white and red trunks. Tani in the black, blue and green trunks. And you can see Zamora now starting to put the pressure on. And sometimes that's a good thing to do against someone like Tani. You've got to prove you're not intimidated, but do not walk onto the shot that you know he's throwing. It's almost like playing rock, paper, scissors with somebody. Someone you know who uses rock all the time, there's no reason to keep using scissors against them. Use something else. And that's exactly what um, Elmar needs to do here. I really liked the work from Omar in the earlier rounds, in rounds one and two, where he just landed the jab multiple times and then went straight to the body with that right uppercut. Yeah, it's a beautiful move. It's that rear uppercut, but it also works both ways as well. A southpaw can throw their rear uppercut to him as well. So it's that backhand that they're trying to throw against their opponent, but they're aiming for the chest. They're not aiming for the chin necessarily, but your opponent, if they walk into a shot, that's in for their chest. It ends here. And a beautiful shot to the, and that, that's the shot we were talking about. The shot that put him down is exactly the shot that works best against the Southpaw. Yeah, and it looks like Tani is just gonna make the count. Potentially no referee Chris Sanyadet saying no way. I mean he didn't really turn to face the referee, he didn't have his gloves up. So Zamora is now going to increase his professional record to seven and zero. Oh with that stoppage. I mean, what a shot. He'd been landing it throughout the whole fight, and he finally found the right right uppercut that ended the fight for Tani. Yeah, and he also used the ropes to help him back up as well, which technically in boxing, you're not allowed to use the ropes to obviously stop your fall, and you can't use them to get back up. It definitely plays on the ref's mind. So a beautiful punch and it was the punch we were talking about ladies that and that gentlemen fight. by way of tko in the second round at the time of one minute and 28 seconds you have your winner fighting out the red corner elma zamora